At the age of eight, Guru Maharaji was delivering the spiritual discourse of the eternal wisdom to large audiences. He was born to Paramhan Satgurudev Srihanji Maharaj, the perfect incarnation of his time, regarded then as the Lord by millions. When Paramhan Satgurudev Srihanji Maharaj left his mortal body, in spite of three elder sons, he chose the youngest and commanded him to carry out the mission of peace in this world by revealing the perfect knowledge within inside each human heart. Speaking to large audiences, Guru Maharaji declared that if anybody comes to him with a sincere desire and a guileless heart to receive the knowledge of eternal perfectness, he would give them what they desired, regardless of the fact of caste, creed, color and nationality. Now I am here in Tokyo to tell you about this knowledge, to preach you about this knowledge. Lord Buddha even taught four noble truths. Lord Krishna talks about this word in Gita. And when we go into Bible, John talks about this word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. If we go there, the other side, we will find Muhammad saying the same thing, Pakanam. If we go into all the religions, we will find one thing. If all the scriptures, we will find one thing. The word. What is the word? Something that is not speakable. Because we must remember one thing. The definition to the word is, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning. The word was with God. The word was God. Means, this word is God. It is not in alphabet. It's not A, B, C, D. When we say G, O, D, it's not appropriate word for that. Though we may define it in the three forms, G for generator, O for operator, and D for destroyer. We might say this, but this is not God. God is beyond this, much beyond this. The scientists have defined this power as being energy. And they say, energy is never created and never destroyed. This is the energy. And we have to understand this energy and be one with energy. Then only can we understand, then only can we realize why have we come into this world. Man, we can fairly understand that what man has got in his brain is to destroy the whole world. He does not understand that if he tries to cut the same branch he is sitting on, he will also fall down. He doesn't understand that. So he's trying to cut the same branch on which he's sitting. He's trying to cut away the same world he's sitting on, he is on. If this will be destroyed, then where the man will live? Well, actually there is nothing to say. In this world, everybody, everybody thinks that, you know, everyone is carrying on without, without an aim. You get up in the morning, or people, let's say, premies who get up in the morning, they do meditation and so on. But people, simply just extraordinary people, they get up in the morning, maybe they wash their faces, maybe they don't, ride in the car, get to the office, return back to home, start doing something else, watching television, sit back. When it comes to the weekend, they get up late in the morning, take their cars, take it into the countryside. But where are we actually proceeding? Which, what is our aim? Where have we to go? Nobody knows. They just, everyone is moving. And it's like those sheep. When they move, and wherever one goes, the whole thing goes. And if one falls into the ditch, everyone follows. And when we take, talk about peace, People say, I have got peace. Because they think that after getting asleep after three days of work is peace. When you are feeling damn hot, you switch on the air conditioning and that's peace. You know, this is what people think. Someone is standing for a long, long time and he gets to sit for some, some reason. He thinks that's peace. Because he gets a great relaxation there. And that's what he thinks is peace. And that's why people come to me and say, we don't need peace, we have peace. But they don't realize. But they don't understand. That's not peace. Peace is something else. Peace is something beyond that. 
right now, because there is not peace in people's mind, war is taking place. As a matter of fact, there are many societies, and there are many clubs who belong to this thing. They, they have guns, and they fight guns, and they make guns, and they design guns. They want war. There are factories who make pistols and all these guns. They want war. But if someone pulls a gun to them, they don't want war. They're peace, brother. See? This is the thing. And when, and when this will happen to people, then they will realize. See, people were waiting for Jesus to come before. Before he came. They were waiting for him. As anxiously or more as we are waiting today. But when he came and he was standing on this, on this place and people were passing by. And some said, oh, we believe he's the perfect master. And said, no, he can't be perfect master. Because you see, so far we say, perfect master is going to come. This is an intellectual thing. Because we think he isn't here. And he is going to come. But perfect master is always with us. If perfect master is God, he says in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh. And the flesh was Jesus. And if it was the word that always had existed, how could Jesus come and how could Jesus go? He was there with them before. And he is with us now. Why are we waiting for him? He, otherwise he is not perfect master, he is not God. He, he, he cannot do anything to us. Or if he does, and if he is perfect, he is with us now, in our hearts. Because he is the word. We have all assembled here, or at least supposed to be assembled here, to listen and to talk about this strange thing, supposedly a phenomenon to the world, called as peace. Everybody is looking for this in different ways, of course. Some people think it's in money, some people think it's in the external pleasures, some people think it's in the Himalayas, some people think it's in the nature. Well, people are looking for it in different, different ways. But really, it is at one place, right within our hearts. The whole world wants peace. Everybody wants peace. Now, if we maybe don't call it peace, maybe we call it peace of mind. Maybe we don't call it peace of mind, we call it knowledge. Maybe if we don't call it need, a peace, we call it God. Maybe we don't call it God, we, we call it the Word. If we don't call it Word, maybe we call it the primordial vibration. But it call, comes to one point that we need something. And that something that everybody is looking for is peace. Why I, we have assembled here? No, I, personally. I don't, I don't have to say anything. See, I can't promise anything to you except one thing. I can say that I will do this. I can say I will, I will stop the war in Vietnam. I, I can't promise all these things. But I can promise you one thing. I can promise you satisfaction of mind. I can promise you peace. Because I have a method. Now, this thing that is within inside of us, it does not mean a change of religion. You can be a Christian, still follow it. You can be a Hindu, still follow it. You can be anybody following any religion of any caste, creed, color, nationality, coming from North or South Pole, coming from underwater, overwater, underland, overland, anywhere. If you are a human being, if you are a human being, that's it. That's good enough for you to realize this knowledge. For you to experience the bliss within inside of us. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. Well, that's all I have to say about this. And it's, next is completely up to you. <laughs>